I shall not transit to a silly place in Virginia where they think it's Christmas in fucking October, okay? At least the Nightmare and Halloween waited until October 31st. Mariah Carey is still entombed in a block of ice. Let her rest, gentlemen. The war against Christmas does not need to be activated this early. Radosaurus and I will battle across the sky in the way that Archer Hawkwing and Matt Cawthon battled in the third or fourth or fifth book of the Wheel of Time series, all right, with the Horn of Valir. And when that battle comes, it will be as depressing as it always is, as Rad attempts to maneuver me into saying it's okay for other people to have beliefs about things and something, something. Christmas is a day. It's one day. It does not get a whole month. It doesn't get two months. And it certainly doesn't get three months. Okay? There are other holidays in December you can celebrate. Welcome to the intro hour. Let's get introductions out of the way. Who we got here? Lawson. Hey, you got what's going on with you? Uh, we got the Blood Bowl Season 3 Championship being recorded tonight after intro hour. Oh, interesting. Dunamis. Who, so, sorry, who is it? It is me with the High Elves against Dunamis with the uh, Norse squad. Interesting. And both of your characters are retiring at the end of this battle? Dunamis through the playbook, me not through a playbook. But you are retiring? Yes. Okay. Just like Rents did a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I'm I'm just generally curious in a sort of curious way. Just to make sure I'm keeping up on things. I have stopped paying attention to the Blood Bowl chat because it's mostly either been about the tournament or about the Blood Bowl video game. Good time. It's a good time to be a Blood Bowl fan, really. Seems like people are really invested. I have no beef with the Blood Bowlians. James, I see you're here. You got an intro? Uh, not really. I'm actually just typing up my notes for the upcoming game. So just here to chat about Ponder the Mad. Fantastic. Lord Pretty Beard, thanks for that 51 month resub. I am shocked that that actually worked. Sometimes, which doesn't really seem to be agreeing with my Nightbot slash OBS. So good to know that's working. Gutfelden, a rare appearance here tonight. Got an intro? Good evening, everyone. I'm Gutfelden. I am the reason for the AP Christmas rant in the beginning. You can blame me for that, or you can thank me. Either one. Um, besides that, other news, I'm about to get out of the Navy. I'm excited to be a civilian again. So, and that's, that's it. I, I mean, I've been doing hobby stuff. Oh, I've been having a whale of a time. Was it Julius Caesar? It was a Roman general, but I think it might have been Julius Caesar. Maybe it was Alexander the Great, where he went on campaign and the soldiers started rioting somewhere in the middle east and they were like we're gonna leave the army and the general was like okay civilian and all of them felt so embarrassed at being called civilians that they basically re-enlisted on the spot just so they could make it back home they were so infuriated and sad to be considered a civilian while out on a campaign Fascinating. That won't, that won't work on me. You call me civilian, I'll be like, oh, thank God. Maybe I'll go to church again. Can't go to church in the Navy? I mean, it's it's a personal thing. I'm All right. Not super religious. We don't need to examine that. I just, I'd be shocked if navies didn't have chaplains or some sort of, like, Corman slash chaplain -y combo. Oh, we have a chaplain on board. We have a permanent chaplain on board. Great guy. <laughs> it was real funny during the deployment. 
He was very... I asked him in the P.O.S. Sir, are you... Would you consider yourself an Old Testament fellow? You're very all fire and brimstone about this conflict. Uh, you know, about us dashing the enemy and God sending his judgment down upon them. You know, would you consider yourself an Old Testament kind of man? And he started going on about it, but it was, it was interesting. It was interesting. Chaplains are important because they give their troops um, plus one to hit in melee. Oh my god. Grim <sighs> Dark James. I apologize to all chaplains out here. You're worth more than a plus one to me, okay? <clears throat> if you if you are a fan of military chaplaincy being discussed, I think his name is Steve Shrikes, does a topic on he does a bunch of videos that are like about Starfleet from Star Trek, but they're always coded to actually be about something else. Um, so it's like a two layer discussion and he does one on atheist chaplains in Starfleet. That was, I thought was incredible. It was funny, but it was also informative. And of course it always meant something else. There was a whole second topic being discussed. It is a good job. <sighs> what can I say about my intro this week? I have something like 14 topics to discuss. I guess the first one here is audio testing. I've I've had a lot of audio problems lately. By that I mean before two or three weeks ago when I turned my microphone gate off. Um, and in the process that has caused people to be able to hear my typing, which I didn't know until the last two or three days. So I've now turned it back on, but I've reduced its uh its efficacy to like the bare minimum so hopefully you're getting entire words out of me right now and the end of my word isn't being randomly clipped off and the beginning of my word doesn't just start halfway through the word so just really really trying to solve these problems that are always a pain in the ass and of course moving between computers didn't help and uh when i moved to this computer i had forgotten to I brought all of my settings over, but I had forgotten to set up the advanced audio properties on OBS. So I wasn't able to split audio in a recent uh, short run series that I'll be talking about later. And so when there was like a lot of people talking over each other and like coughing and stuff like that, I'm not gonna be able to clean that audio up, which really sucks. Uh, and I would be able to clean that up if I had done my work properly. I, I don't have the whole of chat open, but I can see people getting spicy there, and we'll come back to that in a second. What else do I have here? King Arthur Pendragon is out and will not return until October the 26th. No, wait. Let me say this more in a positive way. Let me put a spin on it. Hold on a sec. We're going to see a return of King Arthur Pendragon as soon as October the 26th. We'll be back in England. Once more, there we go. Yes, make it. I, I'm limelighting it. I'm selling it. There has to be some sort of terminology for that reversal I did there to make it sound positive, even though it's not. <laughs> some people would call that lying. Is it gaslighting? Maybe. Okay, what else here? I have a horror, I would, yeah, you was going to call it a one-shot. We have a horror, uh, well, okay, so originally I was going to do a bunch of horror one-shots, but I wasn't able to get enough people for it, and I was really hoping to get Grimdark James in a horror one-shot, uh, but I couldn't, again, I couldn't get the people for it. But we do have a one-shot of Mothership that we'll be deploying at the end of the month. Patreon is going to get it first. I think it's going to end up being six parts. And it will be the test bed for breaking episodes up into about 45 minutes to an hour long. Early alpha viewers of it have indicated that they found 45 minutes to be an extremely acceptable amount of time to watch a horror one shot and that it was broken up well. Of course, that sample size is one, uh, one person, but 
I have no follow up to that. We will be doing a, the Mothership tutorial scenario called Another Bug Hunt. Um, Mothership is extremely accessible. If you buy the box online, you get all of the PDFs immediately, I believe. And the game creator will even email you personally to ask if you have any questions, which I thought was pretty neat. Uh, Sean from Tuesday Night Games. You know, the only other creator of a tabletop RPG that I've communicated with was, of course, the very famous creator of the Pendragon RPG, who said that my original Pendragon series was pretty good. Greg Stafford. Not to toot my own horn or anything. There is no Imperium Maledictum this week. There will be an episode of campaign planning that will be taking its spot. A lot of people said they wanted to see stuff like this, so I will be planning Season 1.5, Season 2, and Season 3, and possibly the Season 2.5. I haven't really put any thought into that yet. But I'm, going, I'm doing my best to not think about it, which is difficult, and then I will show all of my thinking about it on stream and show the process, because that is apparently what the people want. So that's what you're going to get is a complete fucking mess as I write all over a spreadsheet and or a piece of paper and it will be pure chaos but hopefully you can follow along and figure out how I put things together I asked for blue sky uh ideas literally anything I will take people's ideas on the following topics a future show a show that you a viewer or former cast member or current cast member run through the AP gaming role plan or a brand or a process or improvement to the way shows are currently run. We got some, we got some here. There is one that I want to kind of address immediately. I should, oh my God, it's called blue ocean concept. All right. We're going to stop right here, James. I had never heard of a blue sky meeting until earlier this year. And now you're telling me that that's 10 years out of date. What is a blue ocean meeting? Explain it to me. Uh, so uh, blue ocean, red ocean theory is a concept that um, a lot of businesses only think in terms of competing in their current market, which is a red ocean, like it's filled with blood. Right. And that bl blue ocean thinking is about how do you create new markets? So how do you, oh, it's not, not a case of how, how do you do what right, right. Do better, how do we do what no one's ever done before? I just remember you actually already explained this to me about three months ago. You did explain this to me before. I'm not doing so well, guys. I'm not doing the best. Not 100% here. Um, I got a suggestion to run a Bridgerton Downton Abbey through Good Society. I think that's very interesting. I also don't think it's going to work, and I will explain why here. I'm pretty sure I know who submitted this, so I'm not coming at you. I just want to explain to you in the audience why I don't think my casts are capable of pulling it off. Um, recently, and this is going to tie into a Vampire the Masquerade thing later, recently on a, was it Pendragon where James had this discussion with me that nobody wants to get flirty with me on my shows? Reasonably so, because most of the cast members for those sort of shows are already married men. Um, I mean, that's 99% of what good society is, is you're just going to be flirting with the game master, right? I think I have a sufficient pool of data that says that while people might enjoy that type of show, for instance, I might enjoy watching it, and indeed, I actually did enjoy watching the Dungeons and Daddies good society run uh what did they call it something with daddies in the title surely but you can get it on there if you subscribe to their patreon for even one month you can get all of their side content which is very good uh all that jizz was incredible the pokemon go to the polls where mewtwo attempts to take over the world and the president of america is forced to negotiate with mewtwo uh west wing style it's pretty good the Good Society was also excellent. They brought in a expert on the Regency period. So, you know, 
you've probably heard of what Regency is, right? Like you've heard of the Regency period. I hadn't realized that it wasn't strictly Victorian, but referred to a specific period of time where there was a regent, which now that I'm thinking about it, it makes perfect sense that it refers to a specific period of time where the ruler was a young boy who was too young and there was a regent running things. But, you know, I learned about regency when I was a teenager and we don't really have nobility here in America. So I just heard regency and was like, it's just a fancy British thing. I never put together that it referred to a specific time period in the late 1800s. I always just thought it was kind of Victorian. Victorian-ish sort of deal. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think good society is on the table, unfortunately. I don't believe it's possible. And I was recently instructed by a savant, a guru, a consultant, someone who believes in blue ocean, red ocean theory that uh, probably not going to not going to make it in this environment. Some of the other suggestions that came with this, it's like a five or six parter. Pretty interesting. We'll take a look. Another suggestion that came through that, though, is solo RPGs, and I strictly refute. Um, I don't see myself doing that in the future in any way, shape, or form. Uh, a solo RPG is what you call authoring. It's called being an author, and I don't do that. I don't have that capability within me. I was going to run a semi-solo RPG about two years ago, and it's pretty easy to place when I was going to run it. You see, I was planning on a sort of post-apocalypse American Civil War sort of deal where Russia invades and a like, post-World War III disaster scenario, and I was going to use the solo rules in the back of the books and like the warden, or not the warden manual, the like, referee manual and all that stuff but i just was getting the weirdest feeling in the world and i was like there's all these reports from other country intelligence services that are mocking the united states because we keep telling people russia's about to do something bad but nah that's not a big deal it's probably but i just get the weirdest vibe like america keeps saying this and then America was like, hey, something big is going to happen and Russia's going to be involved. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to cancel this show. The vibe is so weird. And I think about three weeks later, uh, the Olympics happened and the invasion of Ukraine started. So I was like, mm, bullet dodge. That would have been a really controversial topic to be launching for a live show. Uh, so instead, I stumbled into new fucking Caledonia. So instead, I used the same system for New Caledonia, which also had a local rebellion funded by the Russians. Unbelievable. I, I can't win with Twilight 2000s and Russians. It's a, bad, it's a bad call. It's a bad call. You know, what a great segue, though, to the next topic. Twilight 2000 is going to have its first guest episode at the end of the month. And it'll probably be fully done by the end of the year. I anticipate we probably have about six to eight episodes left. Although, you know, crazy shit can happen all the time. And uh, we're going to delay all the episode re releases until it's all done. And then we're going to release them uh, one by one over the course of like 15 to 20 weeks. Because apparently that's what people want. So that's what we're going to do. And it'll let me edit out some of the dumb stuff I did. I may have specifically used historical... I, I'm, I'm decided to play by Hideo Kojima rules, which is it's okay to use historical incidents. It's not okay to use real people's names as NPC characters. Uh, so we're, we're going to have to edit out certain references, and uh, I'll have to voice over and replace them. But that's okay. We can make that happen. I've done a lot of talking. Anything my intro hour live audience slash uh, contributors here? <laughs> what, what did Lawson call himself? Co-host? Anything my 
Uh, pseudo co-hosts would like to add about all this jibber jabber I've had so far. I'd just like to point out that we're now 20 minutes or one third of the way into intro hour, and the only person that's mended Ponto, Pondo was me, and he's even in the channel and you haven't referred to him yet. So I, He is at the bottom of the list of announcements. I don't want to get dug in too deep talking about Pondo and not get through my announcements. I'm dark. James, it, the topic is Pondo, but there's a lot to talk about. Does anyone else have... I just don't want to see any bait and switch here. When we all came for Pondo talk, I'm going to get to you and it's like, oh, no time to talk about Pondo. You're going to, you're going to Matt Damon him, basically. Matt Damon. I mean, it was to be expected. He's even here. Now that's a real co-host material, all right? <laughs> Listen, I've been trying not to be snarky this entire time. You can be snarky. I don't know what you want to be snarky about, but go ahead. Pop off, There's Quinn. A of leeways in, I could have said something, but like the uh, flirting with the GM, I was, I was going to say something about, well, that just puts me in a sour mood then. You don't like flirting with the GM, or you don't like no, flirting with me? Joke, like I was the one that made it, put that in the survey. But I you did it, though. I know something. who put it in there. Uh, sure. Look up. Look, I don't. I don't want to flirt with Arthur. Flirt with Arthur because I just. Thanks, I appreciate that. that. Good. I've got, I've got to let him down later and let him know that it wasn't real, Arthur. Sorry, it was just a game. <laughs> I am going. I have about three jokes that I'm going to pass on because people would like to see less negativity from me. And the self put downs that I have cooked up would be very funny in my opinion, but not everyone gets my humor. But just know that silence was me cooking. All right, I was I was sizzling while I was cooking. This okay. next note says, "Thank you for being more upbeat." I appreciate that. The voice of <laughs> the voice of Lord Hunger. Um, you're so uh, look, just to be clear, Mike is certainly not the only person who said that I'm very negative and I should be more positive. Famously, Radosaurus also said that, uh, quite publicly as well. Star Wars, I, you know, I've been talking about this pod racer game. I honestly don't know at this point if I can make it work in a way that it'll entertain people. I have serious concerns about, I mean, it's Star Wars. It's, well, it's a tabletop RPG, right? Vehicle mechanics are always bad. That's all there is to it. No one likes them. Star Wars probably does a really good job compared to everyone else, but it's still not great. And I don't know if the way I want to format the show is going to work out. The people who I had playtest it did, did, like, flat out did not enjoy the way that I ran it. I've made some changes, but some things have happened recently that make me think, I don't know if we can pull this off, but I've been thinking about running a post Endor game where the players are members of the Imperial Navy or Army or the Stormtrooper Corps, which isn't technically neither. Um, and just do like uh, people, not necessarily like evil members of the Empire, but like average people in the empire who have some choices to make about how important order and justice is to them like the M the imperial navy is falling apart warlords are basically thieving whole fleets from the empire it's the rebellion is becoming a new republic but isn't quite there yet sort of deal like they don't have the sort of moral authority or the mandate of the people and it's a question between this group, who I would intend to all have a different answer to that question, to convince each other which way to go over the course of the seasons, or season, maybe even just a short arc. But I thought it would be interesting to explore that sort of Andor-style bureaucracy of evil, where not everyone is necessarily straight out they're just kind of boring and going with the flow and maybe order has a point you know is is having an orderly society bad 
they're still inheritors of the legacy of the New Republic. I just, I don't know, I want to ask complicated questions. Kind of Nuremberg-ish, I suppose. Just something to keep in mind. I don't know if I could get a cast for it, though. I also don't know if I could pull it off, but I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Maybe don't let me cook on this one, though. All right, there's a bunch of chat we lost here. Hearing a lot of fear of not feeling masculine when talking to a character through a human medium. I don't know what that means. Sorry, Sandra, I don't know if I interpreted that right. Uh, if someone can be cooking, can they be undercooked? Yes, yes, they can. I've been undercooked quite often. Star Citizen. I was going to make a video about Star Citizen. I'm actually not sure if it's worth it. I've kind of been trying to slightly hype it up while also keeping it realistic. But Grimdark James abandoned it immediately. Spoon talked about getting in on it and then uh, didn't. Connor Hughes asked about it and then hasn't shown. It's basically just me and Soundwave. And sometimes we can grab Kane when he's not busy. But the free fly event is coming mid-November or maybe late November. And it sounds like either it'll be the last thing before the 4.0 patch or it will be the drop of the 4.0 patch. So it might be a good time to get started. You know, you get to play the game for free for like 10 days and they, they've really kind of been working on it for a while and fucking up constantly. But it sounds like lately... They're making a lot of progress, and they seem to be, I don't know if they're Theranosing us, but they seem to be getting pretty close to cracking their stated goal of having thousands of people on a server at the same time. And I know, yes, yes, MMOs have thousand people on a server all the time, but they do that through instancing and such. And they're trying to get around that with their dynamic server mapping or whatever it's called. They're cooking up a new way of doing things that's incredibly tech intensive. Um, but, you know, a month ago, they were having trouble booting up 500 person servers. And now today, they've, they did uh, 1,000 about two or three weeks ago, and they did a 2,000 last night. And uh, the 2,000 turned on, and people were able to join, and then they all just kind of stood on a train. <laughs> The train moved, and no one else could move while they were on there. So, yes. They're working on it. They're working on expanding things. If you're interested in Star Citizen, it may be time to let me know, because I feel like the video would be two parts. The first part would be, here's how you get started in Star Citizen. You know, go to this website, do these things, download the launcher, Go here, start from New Babbage, go to these places, get up into space, never go back to New Babbage ever. Um, and the second part would be, here's all the ways Star Citizen is fucked up. Like, don't go into warp transit, while, or sorry, quantum transit while on a ladder, or you'll be sucked out into space. Don't go to the toilet while in warp transit, or you'll be sucked out into space. Uh, here are five ways that you might die in the first <laughs> two hours of the game. Um, here's how to make sure you don't slam into the ground in the middle of the night, because night vision is really bad. I'm not sure. It just doesn't seem like people are as, uh, interested as I am. But just to be clear, I have extreme apprehension about Star Citizen. I think it's interesting. I also think it's full of people who've made it thousands of dollars to it and are now joining a cult where they continuously talk about the project. Don't worry, James. There's only like four things left before we get to Pondo. I mean, he, he left. He'll be back. And in greater numbers than before. <laughs> Amazing. I mean, we don't need Pondo here to talk about him, just to be clear. You understand that, right? We can talk about him behind his back. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> I received a suggestion for a Shadowrun show. Now, 
before you start cheering or typing in chat or sending a YouTube comment or sending something on Discord, note that there are a bunch of fucking stipulations about this shit. The Rubicon has not been crossed on this one. Someone else has offered to run it on the AP Gaming Real brand, but the only time they're available is Friday nights during the intro hour, which would mean the intro hour would be permanently canceled in order to get Shadow Run. Number two would all because of the time zone thing. My my I usually play some sort of co-op game with Cotton and Pondo Friday night, so that would either need to be moved or it would also have to be canceled in service to this Shadow Run game. And the third thing is that there is no cast for it yet. And the fourth thing is that I don't, you know, I'm not always 100% into Shadow Run, you know? Just complicated, complicated game. I kind of like it, and then sometimes I kind of don't. Oh, and it wouldn't start until the new year, so I guess that's five. Solaris Knights with a K. Not trying to Intel drop. But the way that the war game is being presented now, it will probably not get a rerun. What happens here is probably going to be the show. It's going to be an entertaining show, I think. And I'm going to not continue the project afterwards. Uh... The way that I've written the rules, I tried to encourage a certain style of gameplay. That is not what happened. I think battle BattleTech players are really going to enjoy what happens a lot. I think you're going to enjoy the mecking and the battling and the battle teching. Uh, it didn't turn out the way that I wanted it to, and it would seem that despite my attempt at having the rules encourage certain behaviors, that didn't happen. And so, in my eyes, this project may be good, it may be interesting, people may watch it, it has failed to accomplish the goal that I set for it. Uh, so, unless I want to commit myself to extensive rewrites, probably this will be the only run of this war game. Originally, this was just supposed to be a playtest for multiple, uh, multiple, like, iterations of rules i don't think that's possible at this point i think that uh i'm not a game designer in that way i don't have the level of experience in encouraging people psychologically to make decisions and despite my attempting to nudge it in that direction it has gone more battle tech and less grand strategic deception and espionage so all right, my next note says Vampire Sexy Times, but I'm going to skip over that one because I already had this conversation with Lawson earlier. So now I'm going to ask people for final thoughts on everything I just said before we talk about Pondo the Mad. Uh, I'm sorry to hear that Solaris Nights with a K didn't go as well as you planned, or at least in the direction you wanted it to go. Uh, it's always sex to see, but I think you can take some gratification in that you've probably sounds like you've made a very successful, or to be successful, show. We'll see. I mean, this is the chickens, their eggs haven't hatched yet, so it is certainly the beginnings of a show. All right, with this great radio, we're now going to move on to talking about Pondo the Mad. What can I say about this madman? He's one of the few people who can call themselves my game master. If you don't know, Pondo the Mad runs a Savage Worlds campaign that I play in as the Irish chaplain, uh, Sean Dublin, who's started out as a not particularly humble reporter and investigator and has evolved into God's most favored son using the power of miracles. I like that campaign, but I don't like Savage Worlds, which I think has led to an unfortunate 
bit of friction between me and Pondo. Between Pondo and I, I should say, in the Queen's English, sorry, in the King's English, between Pondo and I, it has led to some friction, which I think is quite unfortunate on my part. Uh, I don't, I just don't. I don't like Savage Worlds. It's too loosey-goosey. It's very um, generic. It doesn't really lean into anything. I think the card system is really interesting, but I find myself constantly holding on to cards specifically to fuck Pondo over. And I think that has made really a really hostile game environment where I, I mean, I know it's, it's happening because Pondo will make a boss battle and I'll be like, here's my card. Here's the way I employ it. We skip this battle. And he, he seems exhausted afterwards. But I am playing the game using the tools he gave us, and I am cleverly attempting to not die. And I, you know, it's just, it's not a great situation. I don't want Pondo to feel like he can't have boss battles, but also, my character is not strong. They have absolutely no ability to fire guns, drive vehicles, or fight in melee, and they are constantly being forced to do all three of those things at, in boss fights, or just regular fights, just regular ass fights, those topics will come up, and he is literally the lowest score you can have in all three of those capabilities. And so I try to get around it all the time, and that requires using the literal cards that have been dealt. That said, I, I am probably the only member of our party that can't fight. Everybody else has a combat character who's pretty good at fighting in some way or can interfere with magic in some way, but even my holy miracles are non-combat related. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I'm doing my best to keep my character alive and play him the way that I want to, but it, it causes some... Uh, I mean, it just feels like it has encouraged me to play hostilely against Pondo. And so I just, I don't know. Is this an apology? I, th I think it is to some extent. Like, I feel bad that this is how it has been. And I certainly don't want to say it's just the game system's fault. Pondo has put the work in. And if you like Savage Worlds, you should absolutely check out this series. But if the game continues, I probably will not continue with it. Pondo already knows that, though. That uh, when this, like, season comes to an end, however you want to term that, I'm probably not going to st stick with it. It sounds like he's got a whole extra series cooked up after this one. But, uh... I'm not going to be in it. I just am not motivated by that. What other nice things can I say about Ponda the Mad, though? He gave his all in a one-shot recently. This is a guy who ride or dies even as he gets shit on constantly until all hope is removed from him and he's dead inside. As dead as a man who's repeatedly been Goss Rifle headshot or Head damage from continuous Gauss rifle explosions on his mech. Real, real bunch of a time of total warfare references, but you can what you can see when the life is leaving Pondo's eyes, and it's at those moments you have to recognize how often Pondo has life inside him and does his best to avoid reaching that state. I now open the floor to people to say things about Pondo the Mad and discuss Pondo. Wow, depressing. Did we lose James somewhere? <laughs> yeah. I enjoyed having as a player in um in uh the Rogue, Rogue Trader. Trader. Yeah. Do you have any other thoughts about Pondo? It just felt like you came here for the Pondo the Madisms. Now that we're 39 and a half minutes in, and... I mean, maybe I came to hear about people who had to say about Pondo rather I than see. comments. I have repeatedly encouraged Pondo to put his editing skills to the use, which I think he's been doing through 
the Savage Worlds game, but I would like to see him be a YouTube editor for other people since it seems to be, I don't want to say it's a passion for him, but it's certainly something he's been trained at. He is strongly resistant to doing Kingdom Hearts, which is deeply unfortunate because as James knows, that's really kind of the series that most people know Pondo from, is his Kingdom Hearts playthrough. And now that I know he has Kingdom Hearts on Steam, I, I see him playing it. And I would really like Pondo to play through all three plus games and explain the story to me. Because even after reading two wiki pages on what Kingdom Hearts is, the Kingdom Hearts, the area of the game that's called the Kingdom Hearts, I'm still not really sure that I understand it. It feels like watching Evangelion's last two episodes. Can Pondo explain it to me correctly? I think so. I trust and rely on him for that. He's an explaining kind of guy. Lawson, Jeff Felden, any Pondo thoughts? We have chat saying Pondo the dad is good people. Pondo. I haven't. Oh, you go ahead first. I haven't gotten to do much with Pondo. I played Pandemic and Blood Bowl with him. And all of that have been good experiences. And he comes off as a good cast member when he's on your shows. The greatest compliment one man can give another man. You seem like a good cast member on a D minus internet micro celebrity. Yeah, he's fun to play Blood Bowl against, even if the lizards are frustrating to play against. I remember the moment Pondo got activated in Rage and Fury, leaving Sloth behind, entering a new stage. Scott, you had something to say? As a member of the audience, I can say that from my point of view, I enjoy watching Pondo, whether it's in the Cattle Tech one shots or whatever appears on your channel. I've always enjoyed it. He's no Ratosaurus, but still. There it is. Cast member. You don't need to gas up Ratosaurus. He's been too gassed up lately. <laughs> and he's fun to play against. Like, in the Total War Warhammer 3 uh, multiplayer game we did, it was fun to kind of compete against him. Oh, that's the one where Honda declared war on me, and you used that as an opportunity to withdraw from our defensive pack so that both of you withdrew your auxiliary troops from my regiments, dooming my fight against Ponda the Mad as he surprised attacked me. That game? It was fun, what can I say? And I did offer you vast sums of money at no cost, and you denied. I don't need vast sums of money. You always need vast sums of money. And you denied me. There are, there's more to life than vast sums of money. When it comes to... <laughs> to Not money. all that glitters is gold. Only shooting stars break the mold. You know, it also helps is vast sums of money to shoot your enemy with the well, bullets you bought with my money. That is true. That is true. You say, say, I'm a solid C grade. All right, we're going to check Social Blade and see where I'm rated nowadays. We're going to check Social Blade. I'm going to primarily say that I'm a YouTuber rather than a Twitch streamer, which is ironic given that I'm on Twitch now, but almost 50% more content is released on YouTube than on Twitch. So. Let's see here. AP Gaming Real Social Blade YouTube. I'm a C plus. I went from C to C plus, ladies and gentlemen, and anyone who identifies as someone other than those two things. That's right. You're talking to a C plus niche micro streamer as rated Hi. by Social Blade, a completely anonymous... There is no categorization available to me for what a C plus means. But supposedly when you reach a B ranking, 
you should be getting partnership with Twitch or something like that. Wow, C+. Plus. So my YouTube ranking is worse than my grade average in college. Incredible. According to this, it estimates that on Saturday, I made seven cents in YouTube advertising revenue. <laughs> that may be accurate, but it may not be. Well, apparently you, I'm, you... I'm, I'm, I'm C plus. Wow. That takes the wind out of my sails. You haven't, you don't, well, you're, no, well, let me think about that now. Routinely uploading blood. Yeah, I was going to say back in the day. He stopped doing stuff, but yeah, now he uh, he does upload regularly. So yeah, you're C plus, you're C plus player. Welcome to the field, Grimdark James. You're eighteen thousand in in subscriber rank. That's pretty high. I want to know where my where my um fifty four dollars I should have earned this year is. Well, I I can tell you, looking at what it says that I make, that it is not remotely fucking accurate. <laughs> <laughs> it does have you higher than AP Gaming. That is true. I... Whose estimated earnings is like four cents. That is true. So apparently, because I was wondering when I hit, hit, hit 500 subs, apparently it's predicting I'll hit 500 subs June 11th, 2026. <sighs> but you're in the top 18,000, my friend. Well, top 19,000, really, but almost, you're pretty close to your 50,000th view. Impressive. Impressive. I'm at the point where I have more uploads than I have subscribers, which is usually a bad thing. Although, when I started twitching, they recommended, and in fact, when your Twitch automatically uploaded your VOD to YouTube, it would break it up into 15 minute sections, which is why my early games were like 16 parts long. Oh man, YouTube and Twitch were way different back in the day. It has changed a lot. It has changed a lot. All right, I'm going to open this discussion up to what anybody wants to talk about now that we've got. Twelve and a half minutes left. Does Pondo want to say anything about Pondo since he's rejoined the chat? Pondo, do you want to talk about Pondo the Mad? Or Spoon, he's here too. You want Pondo to talk about Spoon? Or do you want me to no, talk, about, talk Pondo? about Pondo? No, I like my way where I misinterpreted it on purpose for the comedy. They can talk about each other, I mean... They could talk about each other. This is just like good society. They'll flirt with each other and then they'll roll dice to see if they kiss at the end of the night or not. <laughs> I, that's that's just like, why is that a thing that needs to be rolled dice for? We're talking about good society, though. Uh, that's, that's tabletop cool. RPG system. I'm not familiar with that tabletop RPG system. Pretty... Bridgerton, are you familiar with the idea of Mr. Darby? No, I cannot say that. Jane Austen? Downton no. Abbey? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> you're going way over my head with... You... Oh, whoa, whoa. Hold on a second. Hold on. Okay. You have not seen Downton Abbey? No. The Downtons. Very well. That's all I'm saying. Maggie I'm Smith Christian. died recently. And it may be a worthy successor to watch the Downtons. She had an amazing part on it. Like old Lena Tyrell before Lena Tyrell was a thing. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Pondo, do you have anything to say about yourself? Uh, nothing really in particular. I, I exist. I am here. Uh, Incredible. I what a legacy for good. the future. I, uh, he staked his claim. I exist. Yep. Yep, I exist. Uh, Truly, like an ancient Greek philosopher king. Only thing that I've really been working on as of late has been the idea of doing like an adaption of 
Powered by the Apocalypse with a war game of some sort or a skirmish game of some sort. Interesting. Not Kingdom Hearts, though, right? No. No, no Kingdom Hearts. Then. It'd be around uh, the one-page rule system because uh, I don't have time with anything else to learn all the rules that have heavy rules to them, like 40K. Also, I just don't have time to deal with 40K. It is a pain in the ass in general. Uh, I love all the VTubers getting into Warhammer 40k, and then they're like, um, their chat just teaches them memes and useless shit. And now I'm getting videos that are like, Lord Tara Saren is the greatest Warhammer 40k female character. And I'm just like, no, she's not. First off, no. She's not the greatest anything. She's a fucking traitorous son of a bitch. I don't give a shit about Lortara Saren. Stop spamming me with videos. Yeah, no, uh, that's funny. That's what 40, I mean, 40k just needs to be memes, really. No one needs to take it seriously. I mean, you can respect the setting without devolving it into memes, okay? There are some very interesting parts to the setting. And as long as you recognize that nothing will ever get resolved so that all the factions can keep existing forever, then you understand how Warhammer 40k works. Yeah, that, that gets old, though. I mean, I, I I say I respected the 40k for as decent amount of time as need be. I, uh... <laughs> I, I, I stopped respecting it once it just really felt like a means to sell toys. But that it is a means to sell toys. Yes. Okay. I, uh, I, the 40k is a thing. Does it deserve <sighs> respect? Somewhat. Funny, I could learn more about it in 40 minutes. I think there's several people that talk about lore in at least 20 to 30, 30 minute segments. Like a channel called 40K in 40 Minutes? Well, that's if you want to learn the board game. Not the I did. I did want to learn the board game so that I could figure out how to stylize future war games. All right, Pano, if you want to talk about yourself, I am forced to turn to Big Spoon to see if he can gas you up. Oh, okay. Uh, so good. So we're talking about Pondo? We are. <clears throat> you can talk about Warhammer 40k. If you, if you don't have anything nice to say about Pondo, we can talk yeah, about I, Warhammer 40k. I think Pondo's, Pondo's a pretty solid dude. Okay. Um, good, good. Not gaseous liquid or plasma, tran man. Transplant to the Midwest, I think, right? Because you're from... I'm from the East Coast, technically. Yeah, speaking. you're from the East Coast. I, but I, mean, I am in the limbo state that is West Virginia, so it's it's a weird <laughs> mixture of northern, southern. West Virginia is a southern state now. Listen, I think I think you, you didn't used to be really well in the Midwest, and I think that's a I think that's a compliment. Yeah. Uh, the, the the fun fact: first when I moved down here, I got hit with uh, negative twenty degree wind chills. That was an experience. Yeah. I'll do it. I'll wonderful. do it. Uh, I immediately bought a code that was made for here mm -hmm. from here. Mm -hmm. Now I go out with like at yeah, 20 degree weather and shorts. Yeah. Well, this is you're just describing West Virginia behavior. That's not Nebraska yeah, behavior. West West Virginia does you know, 70 mile an hour gusts that yeah. are happening constantly. I mean, like, depends I, on I, which part of West Virginia you're at, man. Yeah, but Nebraska and, and Kansas are, are flat. I like when, can 100% say that the winds in Nebraska, at least, are uh, definitely worse than the winds I've ever felt in West Virginia. Yeah. Kaiser, West Virginia. There's a wind farm there between two mountains. All right? That's sure. all I'm saying. Okay. It's also uh, very much the most annoying thing I think I still run into is uh, at certain times of year when the sun gets right at the stoplights and I don't have a mountain to block that. That's that's mm -hmm. upsetting mm -hmm. still. Oh, yes. He's so. still getting adjusted to the flat land like I have yeah. had to in Delaware. This, this is the thing, AP. Sure. Yes. There, there may be a wind farm in West Virginia. You know what else there is? Trees and hills and things that yeah. when the, there are people on the ground will block the wind. In Kansas and Nebraska, 
There isn't any of that. You know, it's I've literally just flat. I've been to every state in the United States. I know what they look like. Well, I also know that you referenced that Nebraska, you drove through it. So I did. Most people called Nebraska a flyover state. So, you know, I've done it more credit than most of the United States has. You made it a drive over state. Yeah. Pondo, are you a, are you a, are you, you're a two time dad right now, right? I am a two time dad. You're saying he's a two timer? No. Can we do that on this show? C- Cotton watches this program. Cotton's uh, here. Live. <laughs> she, she heard what I said, AP. <laughs> I've, uh, I've, I've decided to put two buns in the oven, yes. Yeah. Well, uh, I think yeah. as, as, a, as a fellow, fellow new dad myself, I think that, uh, you know, that speaks a lot for, uh, for Pondo's character. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I, I got nothing but good things to say about Pondo. All right. It was fun hearing you go through the experiences that I went through. Oh my God. Uh, dude, yeah, I know. yeah. Oh man. It was, it was fun hearing it from Henley. Cause I think he was about three yeah, months it, after. Yeah. So. We were, we were roughly around the same, the same. Uh, yeah. Cause he was, he was a little, cause it was basically, it was you Henley and then me. Yeah, and so I, I got I got the previews of, of of everything. Yeah, and all I could do for you, as far as like this is happening, is like, yep, that'll happen. Yeah, that's yep. <laughs> welcome to the club. Yeah, yeah. Cotton, do you have anything you'd like to say about Pawn of the Man? Cotton panicking, figuring out whether or not to turn on the microphone to answer that. Her microphone could be muted at the moment. Her microphone could be muted. That's what we're picking up. Yeah. No answer still. <laughs> we're going to have to move on. Oh, what? Uh, I'm sorry. What was the question? Again? The question? Pond of the man. The answer? I like him. Okay. A complete sentence, technically. Solid, solid vote of confidence there. Solid vote of confidence in Pot of the Man. His wife likes him. That puts him ahead of every far side comic in existence. I think that's the most important oh, person wow. that has to like him. So, a far side <laughs> reference. Holy shit! I used to have far side calendars beside my bed so that I would be able to rip the top one off and see what the joke of the next day was. I I used to have that too. I used to buy those comic books they're just all farsa the farside collection yeah gary larson or whatever his name is it's what the kids call boomer humor well we've got about two minutes left here i'm going to open the floor again for people to talk about whatever they want in that last two minutes uh i could i could Still a couple minutes about uh, the benefits of playing on properly scaled maps. Hmm. I could I could speak to you about the properties of going fucking yourself. <laughs> this is interesting. This is an inside joke that I'm trying. To yeah, it's about. not a joke. It's not a joke. It's definitely a reference. It's definitely yeah, insider yeah. trading. It is a, yeah, it is a it is not a, a joke. Uh, inside baseball joke. I see. Hurtful. Hurtful. Oh, it's fine. It's okay. It could either do with one of a couple of things. One of least I could think of would be uh, either the Warhammer Fantasy deal, the Pendragon. We're never playing Warhammer Fantasy again. Even though the whole cast is here right now, it's still never going to happen. We just, we tell people we're going to play again to gas them up, but that's really just Look, to keep man. the dream alive. Like, like this new character and never come bring, bring literally back. L- like all so here, here, here's the thing yeah all of our all of our available play times yeah other shit's happening then you i know we have other shows going on yes so one of those has to end i'm aware for warhammer to to take its place i talked about the shadow run game offer you made on this very show and no one said i will sacrifice intro hour on an altar of Shadowrun. And without that kind of mandate, I don't know about that. We need we need the mandate. We need I was wrong when I thought being unemployed would make me more available. 
<laughs> well, I have a note here that I was going to talk to you about playing uh, the bomb game. Don't, don't whatever. But now I guess that's done with. All right. In the last no, eight seconds here, people can just do their outro real quick and say goodbye. Oh, five seconds. I'm Sacrifice intro, Shadowrun rules.